Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Ante Room, brought to you by Heart and Hand, the modern Oddfellows Guide at oddfellowsguide.com. If you want to learn more about the Independent Order of Oddfellows, please check out iof.org. Okay, cool. Hey, everybody. I wish I could hear everybody else talking, but I hope I don't lose any Wi-Fi while I'm outside before I go inside. So as y'all can see, I am outside my building. So right there is my shop. So here, let me actually flip this stuff around. So if anybody hears any crazy car noises is because we are having what you see there is a police officer directing traffic. I live in a town of 4,500 residents and we have a police officer directing traffic because they're having a cruise where they loop around the town and then do a donut around the McDonald's and then do the cruise again. And everybody honks their horns as they pass each other so they could kind of do a social distant parade kind of interaction thing and people are live streaming it and stuff it's kind of a neat thing and it's nice they put a cop there because people were doing a lot of burnouts at the intersections and last week somebody did get hurt so that was not cool but enough about that so here we are outside of my building zoom out so right there is vintage karma that's my tattoo shop and that's my car with my Odd fellow stuff all over, so everybody coming down the street sees it. And upstairs is in the front there. We own all of that, me and my business partner, I mean. And so upstairs is my apartment in the front there. That's the tattoo shop. We do not own this part of the building, it's kind of a weird subdivision thing. But here is the entrance. So one thing, um, we did have a little, uh, like a paper taped in the door with our contact information and stuff on it. And it just kind of got ratty looking. So I took it down. I need to come up with something like a vinyl or something for the door so people could see that we're here and, you know, big, loud, I-O-O-F, you know, make sure everybody sees us. So let's go on inside. I'm just gonna lock the door. So before I go upstairs, um, I'm gonna turn this around real quick. So today I am, since today is the 201st anniversary, I am wearing my collar, or one of my collars, and this is my newest addition, this nice uh, nice retro garrison cap that I think it'd be cool if we brought back some hats and fezzes and stuff, but that's just my personal opinion. I'm a fan of hats. Hey, Debbie. So here we are. These are the stairs. We have a little, Got a sign that we'll pull out if we're having like a social for the public. That way, you know, easier if people see us. So up we go to the steps and there's 26 of them. I apologize if I make anybody seasick with my camera action here. And that's a charter to another lodge in Illinois that's still around, but they don't have a building and that's the earlier charter. They got a replacement charter because that one got too damaged and old. And I ended up with that for safekeeping. So here's a banner I got. Got Goliath. Uh, those are my grandmother's chickens. So she always had those on her porch. And I don't have a porch. This is this little, uh, little vestibule room is the closest thing I have to a front porch. We got this really cool kind of retro light up there that's super, it's super like space age looking, but I can only get to that one light bulb from the ladder because otherwise you go down the pit of doom. So that piano has been sitting there for probably 50 years. So it ain't going nowhere. It's, it's too heavy. 
got a bunch of old Grand Lodge of Illinois photos that are in different states of of disrepair that I need to kind of fix up a little bit and then get those mounted on the wall. So here is what is technically the outer door. Um, got a nice peephole, nice little our visitor. So we got our peephole there. So now you come inside, we have a nice little 316, that's the lodge number display with the shields and hoodwinks that everybody sees when they, you know, greets them when they come in. And so at this point, we either go left to my apartment or we go right to go to the lodge. So I'm gonna go right to go to the lodge. So here we are, and this is the ante room. As you can see, I have decked it out as much as I can with all sorts of stuff. That was custom made by, uh, was it Michelle and Laura went to Gatlinburg, right? And got that done in the Smokies. So that's really cool. So in there's the uh, kind of like the storage room and then the bathroom is through there. And that's a full bath. So that way when I have guests come, they can have a, a full bathroom to use. That's my laundry room. Nothing exciting there. And that's a futon that is the guest bed. Got another banner here that I um, picked that one up out of the Ozarks. Got some art. Got the venerable wardens hanging there. Got the, got your arrows. Nice old lantern sign that would have been outside to let people know when it was lodge night. Big old axe and a flag. Let's see what we got up here. We got, got our in memory. That's crooked, I'll have to fix that. This is probably one of my favorite initiatory degree banners that I've ever seen. I just love the way that skull looks. It just looks so like, it looks like an artist designed that today like out of Juxtapose magazine or something. So I'm really, really love that. That was a gift from a client, um, Thea, and she gave me a ton of awesome Oddfellow stuff that uh, really was awesome because it was all from Illinois, it was from the Closed Marion Lodge, so it was really a nice, nice kind of tip there to get, it was really cool. Got another degree chart, got a encampment chart there. A nice little table with some art stuff that lodge members have made or different people have made and given us. It's a folded book. It says odd. Got some, got our brochures. There's Louie's book. Got some stuff made by all sorts of people. So I think it's cool collecting all the little art items that our current members are making. I think it's really a rich tradition that we have to have the, uh, um, just this artist kind of thing, even going back to the beginning where it was all about, you know, we just had to make it out of necessity. So of course, here's our door to our lodge. Um, so I got this nice kind of reproduction cast iron hand knocker that I painted that on. And we didn't have a peephole cover for the outside. So I painted an eye, so when you slide the wicket, the pupil actually moves off to the side, so that's kind of a neat thing. And I'm gonna open the door, and my cat, Cole, is gonna run on in, because he loves to run in here, because he knows he's not supposed to be in here. So I'm gonna do a slow pan. Okay, so that's a slow pan. I'm gonna kind of walk more out to the middle of the room. So, got some old art and stuff hung up there. Got a lantern. Got our valediction. So this is the Vice Grand Station. So of course we have our valediction there. Let me see if I could get that a little bit of focus. So this, uh, this light's really cool. Um, me and my business partner, um, purchased this from Danielle from American Pickers. And this lantern was from a church and it was actually picked on air. 
So I can't remember exactly what the episode season and number was, but there's an episode where Danielle gets to go picking with uh, Mike and she gets several of these church lanterns and she had a artist friend of her make the, these are prints of um, watercolors that they made of the symbols. And it's just beautiful. It's just a gorgeous piece. And one of those things I bought a lot earlier in on my Odd Fellows journey. And I think it just really makes the lodge room nice. So these axes are interesting because that says, that's left supporter to the Vice Grand. We'll go across over to here. This one is right supporter to the Vice Grand. Uh, no, as far as I know, Danielle is not an odd fellow, but it would be awesome if she joined us because I think she's our kind of people and I think we're her kind of people. So back over there, we got some shields and so I know, I, I, I'm sure a lot of you know that about the whole haunting type stuff we have going on here. A lot of lodges are haunted. So this corner of the staffs, they love to fall over at the end of the night after a meeting. I don't know if it's something to do with like temperature changing in the floorboards or people walking around and then leaving, but it's always something that happens at the very end, like when most of the people have left for the meeting and there's only like one or two people left. And another fun thing about this is whenever we've done the initiatory degree, every single time, whoever, no matter who's being the warden, this stick is what they pick. Everybody goes for this one. It just speaks to them. It's just a crooked, crooked stick that's just an old vine and it's just perfect. And I'm gonna put that back over there. Hopefully I'm not making everybody dizzy. So let's work our way up this side of the room. So yes, that's a Ninja Turtle video game. We bought that up here to play um, for one of our socials. So we got our degree banners there. Got, got the road to Jericho. So we're coming up the chaplain's side here. Of course we have the links painted on the floor in the middle where no one shall pass unless they're doing something, you know, in form. So across the top here, you'll notice all of these collars that we have hung up. We don't have a lot that's original to this lodge. We brought this lodge back five years ago and these collars hanging are original to this lodge. Most of them were found in the crawl space when I first moved here. And then the rest of them were donated back to us when we got up and running by the uh, Douglas County Museum that were duplicates of ones that they had in their collection. And then just across the top, I have these hats put up here for just for decoration, it looks cool. People seem to dig it. And there's like kind of like a doorway there. That actually goes down to the tattoo shop. So I literally, um, I literally walk through the lodge as my commute every day whenever I'm working, which is not right now. <laughs> so uh, my tattoo artist friend, Caleb, who works with us at Vintage Karma, he painted that, that um, probably like first couple weeks of the quarantine. And now it's like, okay, it's huge. So we gotta figure out how to get it back to his apartment. So we got our, we got our conductor, we've got an inn that kind of hides the HVAC system. And then there's a nice little deck there out back, which is great during socials for any of the smokers who wanna not have to go down the stairs. And we got a bunch of music stuff over there cause we like to play music. And we got like the digital projector for the yoga classes and a PA. So here is the Noble Grand. So the only other thing that is also original to this lodge is that angel shelf with the skull on it above the Noble Grand station. So I'll, I'll take a closer look at that in a moment. Let's look down. I just got this printed up. So I'm really stoked that we finally have a big old honking check for doing donations with. So I'm pretty, pretty happy with how that came out. So that will definitely be getting put to good use before I go up on the, the platform there. Got our warden's ax there. 
and got our actual degree banners over there that we use and our charters there. And got some, got our little bar area. There's some trash that I gotta get rid of, but whatever. Some of our banners from events we've held. Little, little kitchenette bar that we use during our parties. Of course, what lodge is complete without a messy secretary desk? I am now the proud uh, taker over of the secretary position. So lucky, lucky me. So that's my responsibility to not be messy. So yeah, here we are. This is kind of one of the crown jewels of our lodge is that shelf that when the building in the early 70s was purchased by somebody and the lodge had been closed by for 20 years at that point and he auctioned off everything in the lodge and sadly um all we have left is this angel shelf and the uh the collars we found and i really definitely love this piece because a judge in town who is a mason brought this back to us when he heard about us so that is just a huge awesome thing to come home to us and be in the lodge so i'm going to turn around real quick and give you the view from the top do 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 hopefully nobody's sick okay so i'm gonna slide on down the side here i don't know where the cat is so i'm just gonna leave the door open Got that, that's awesome. So here we go. Got the nice tin ceilings in here. We're back to the back to the hallway. Of course, both of our doors have the the nice classic peephole. And here we go. This is where the magic happens. So I have this kind of funky door that's like a pieced together door that a friend made for me that I close whenever it's lodge time and I don't need people piling into my personal space. But whenever we do have lodge socials, I do open up this half of the apartment to be part of the social area. So the lines between my private residence and the lodge have definitely gotten super blurred. And that's why I know it's not for everybody. So up there we got, you know, got some nice banners and with the up lights on them. It changes colors slowly. There we go. You can see the color shift there. Take you out the, on the deck. I could, I'll, I'll do that in a bit. So some art that, you know, friends made. It's my refrigerator. So did you know you could just buy a vinyl wallpaper that's like self-adhesive? Like it's basically like a giant sticker and you could totally redo your fridge and make it look dope. So it took, took two people to do this. It took several hours, but I did it several years ago and it's still perfect. I highly recommend. So this is the kitchen area. So I'm not a very kitcheny person. So I just joke that this kitchen is all for show. So other people use this kitchen more than I do. So I've got the old, old farm sink in there. I got a stove. More art, it's kind of like graffiti looking. Got an all see an eye, copper painted ceilings, fan, cow skull. And I don't know if this is gonna show up on camera or not. But old Tom is sitting in the window there, looking out over everything. So this is my view. It looks like a very urban area where I live, but it's just because it's on this one block that's the downtown. And it's definitely not, it's definitely not urban at all. Like I said, there's 4,500 people that live here when everybody's home. So this is the room I just finally got to take care of since it's uh, been quarantine time. So it's time to get them home projects done. So I'll just do kind of a pan around. So. Exposed the brick a number of years ago. So that was phase one of the project. Bathroom, that's my bathroom. That's gonna be later on the list of things to get 
fixed up. So got, got these fancy cheap Amazon lights I bought that just look cool with the collars draped over it. And got George, another George. Little Memento Mori scene, another another uh, banner that I picked up from an auction. Some more stuff that I've picked up from auctions and art, 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 art. And my big honking TV and my cat litter box. And this is looking back into the other room. So you can see, yeah, I've got my ladder out, still working on it. And yeah, so. So that's really it. So I'm gonna turn this thing back around and I'm gonna quickly scroll through, see if I missed any questions or anything because I did not spend one second looking at what anybody said. So just give me two seconds here. I'm just gonna quickly zippity doo dah through this. Do, 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 do. Thank you, Jessica Yingling. Hey, Chris Zaffy. Ha, <laughs> cool. Hi, from Wisconsin. Uh, Roger, that is for the Erie Lodge. Um, I can't remember the number. Is it 40? Um, it's for the Erie Lodge that's over near Greenville. And uh, they don't have a building anymore. They had sold it a couple of decades ago. And ooh, almost lost my garrison cap. Um, so a member of their lodge had held a lot of their property from the lodge. And he had passed away. And so the lodge needed somewhere to store the stuff very quickly. So I was called and I ran down there to try to get as much as I could. So um, I <laughs> placed the song on the piano. The piano barely even does anything. It's all, it's all old and frozen up. Oh, I, Jay Darling, yes, I do feel like the luckiest member alive because it's just the whole thing is like I discovered, I wouldn't, if I hadn't moved to Illinois, I wouldn't have discovered it. So, so it's just like, just enough to cover whatever, you know, if, you know, they're, cause every Wednesday we hold a lot, um, when, of course, under regular times, every Wednesday we um, have a free yoga class in here. And, you know, we try to do a lot of, as much stuff here that we can. Um, we started hosting the, um, the local um, GSA group and um, so it's, it's cool that we're being able to like allow uh, people who otherwise wouldn't be able to rent someplace because they don't have the income to do it, to give them a space to um, have their meetings or their class. And uh, so that's kind of one of the ways we're able to help get out into the community by literally having them come inside our doors to see the lodge and have their meetings in here. And it's a good way to try to get some members. So I'm gonna go out the deck here and hopefully my cat doesn't run behind me because that would be, be terrible. So hopefully the internet doesn't cut out. Look at that. It's gorgeous. So I'm gonna flip it around so everybody can kind of see where I live. So this is the back of the building. So that's the city hall there. It used to be a bank once upon a time. And if you look at it on the, the satellite view of Google Maps, the building is in the shape of a football. Very interesting. I live in Douglas County. It is the flattest county in Illinois. So there's very little to no elevation change. And that's at the end of the block. That's our grain elevator and uh, just big old silo for corn or so soy and uh, just kind of looks different in every form of light. They're called them prairie skyscrapers. Every town has them, at least one, and they all look different and you can never get lost. You can never get lost out here because it's so flat. And if you need to find the closest town, all you got to do is try to find the, you know, the big grain elevator sticking up and then you'll find a, you know, a grouping of people somewhere. So yeah, you can't really get lost out here, even though it's very remote 
between like on average it's about like eight miles seven eight miles in between every single um every single uh city or if you call it city every little town because uh all these towns were set up during the um that westward expansion um after the civil war and we're all railroad towns and back in the day with the steam engines you had to space the towns or the, the, you had to space the water stops out for um for the trains so that's why every like seven or eight miles there's a town because they built up around the water stops for the locomotives and places like our lodge were one of the first things that were established when our town tuscola was founded so our lodge actually dates back to 1865 and it didn't land in this spot until the 1890s when the lodge built the building and then they were here from the 1890s until they folded in the early 1950s and one of the interesting thing, things about that is i'm going to turn that around so we refinished the floor in here it was carpeted with that horrible green carpet so we ripped up the had the carpet ripped up and we had to rent sanders to get all the glue because it was like that old industrial glue so up where the warden and the conductor are are hundreds and hundreds of match burns. Like, probably what happened is the tax records show that the lodge sold the building in the early 30s. So probably what happened was they took that horrible hit during the Great Depression, lost a lot of membership, got down to maybe enough for a quorum, and it turned into a smoking club, card club, and you could probably see, you could see on the floor where they had their, um, like those lawn chairs. You could actually see the marks from the chairs on the floor where they were s sitting around an area where it's kind of open. And they must have just been playing poker and lighting cigarettes or cigars and just throwing their hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of matches on the floor. So probably if they, you know, took that hit in the early 30s and that quorum was enough to hang around for another 20 years, just smoking and playing cards until one of them died probably and then they lost the charter and it just sat empty for you know however long but yeah let's check up on these messages here oh Lene wants to know what the hat I'm wearing is I am wearing a, a very snazzy old garrison cap that I guess would have been you know used for lodges for like parades and field meets and stuff so yeah I'm fond of that. So yeah, I got this and I got like a odd fellow, like a red felt fez for a lodge out of it with the three links on it. Tristan, how far from St. Louis? I'm about uh, like two and a half hours from St. Louis. So, oops. yeah. So if anybody has any last minute questions, please let me know or I'm just gonna, gonna say have a wonderful 201st anniversary of the independent order of odd fellows in north america and i hope you guys have a wonderful day and a safe day and be good to each other and have a great night all right